thank you so much for your time today. Uh, it's great meeting you, and uh, I'm really excited to, to chat about the monk and the gun. I, thank uh, you for having me, Daniel. Absolutely. I was, I was such a fan of Lunana, and so I was so excited to see the monk and the gun. I caught it at TIFF um, and, and loved it just as much. I think it's phenomenal. Uh, so where did the idea for the monk and the gun get started? Uh, well, you know, um, the, uh, the, I grew up during that period, you know, and, um, I was the son of a diplomat. So I was kind of like, I grew up in this whole, uh, the politics and the governance change of everything, but also being a son of a diplomat, I grew up outside Bhutan. Uh, so I spent time in uh, India, uh, I spent time in Europe, in the Middle East, and uh, interestingly, I did my uh, undergrad in political science uh, from the U.S. <laughs> so uh, being in that, uh, you know, that environment, uh, in Bhutan, we always have a saying uh, that your eyelashes are so close to you, you don't see them. Uh, so you could say that for me, growing up outside Bhutan and then visiting Bhutan during my, you know, during my holidays every year, I got to experience this change in a very uh, objective way. You know, uh, a, a lot of Bhutanese growing up in Bhutan, they, they didn't really know what was outside in the, in the outside world. So for them, it was just a change that was happening. But for me, I could really see the change and how everything was uh uh, you know, how Bhutan was trying to pursue something and at the same time losing what they had. Um, but also you could say the the main catalyst for this uh, this film was that during the pandemic, I was I was stuck in Bhutan and I was stuck there for about six months and uh, I ended up building a stupa. <laughs> So while building the stupa, you know, when we laid out the foundations, all these lamas came and they started burying weapons and, you know, and of course we didn't have real guns. So we had like small plastic toy guns that we were burying. And when they told me the significance and the symbolism of that, I thought that was so beautiful. And I thought it would, uh, you know, come together very well with this story of change and transition that I always had in mind. Growing up that way, uh, you know, away from Bhutan and coming back and seeing that change as you were talking about, how differently, how differently do you view that change as an adult versus how you saw it when you were younger? Uh, I'm wondering when you were younger, maybe it was you had this experience in the outside world that was glamorous or something, and now mm -hmm. you see it a little differently? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, when I was a child, of course, coming back to Bhutan, I was always, uh, you know, you could say disgruntled about coming back home because I, I, I had to, you know, uh, go to a place where I wouldn't get my happy meals, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to drink Coke. I wouldn't be able to uh, watch Cartoon Network for a few months. And uh, I would wonder, oh, how, what will I do to, you know, uh, pass my time there? But now as an adult, when I look back, um, you know, uh, I can see the preciousness of my culture, of my tradition, and uh, how, uh, you, know, you know, the monk and the gun, I, I've made it almost like a comedy, but then in a way, uh, I, I am touching upon, you know, some very intimate things that, you know, we Bhutanese lost in our pursuit of uh, modernization, change, democracy. So definitely, I feel that there are things lost. Um, for example, um, I, I keep touching upon this, but the sense of innocence. Uh, in my culture, uh, innocence is a very, very important quality of who we are. Uh, and there are many scenes in the movie where I think the modern mind can be quite skeptical, you know. Um, they can be like, oh, this wouldn't happen in, in, in real life. You know, a, 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 a man who has been just been uh, you know, given the opportunity to sell this gun for so much money, he wouldn't just give it, you know, as an offering. But yes, that does happen in Bhutan. Uh, a police officer will not throw his gun into a hole. Yes, that does happen in Bhutan. Uh, people would not know, you know, not known their birth birthdays. But yes, that does happen in Bhutan. You know, I, I was telling people that um, January 1st is a very busy time for me on Facebook. Facebook because I have to wish people happy birthdays because so many of my Bhutanese friends uh, you know they didn't they don't have birthdays and they have to 
make up a birthday and January 1st is the most, you know, logical, uh, you know, option for them. So definitely a lot of things I feel are lost. And I'm quite traditional that way, you know. Um, I feel like, especially in this modern world, this authentic human, you know, these fantasies, these stories are really needed. Uh, and, uh, you know, that keeps us human, that keeps us, uh, you know, uh, authentic, yeah. Hmm. Well, you mentioned, you, you started to talk about the tone a little bit of, of mm. the, the Monk and the Gun, how there are plenty of comedic moments in the yeah. film, even even amidst dramatic things or serious things <sighs> happening. Um, and I love the tone. It, it's a very similar tone in a lot of ways to Lunana, where it's this, uh, whether it's funny things happening or serious things happening, there's this kind of easy <laughs> charm. I, I, I wondered how you would describe the tone of The Monk and the Gun. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I keep going back to this, but uh, I think Innocence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, during uh, Lunana's, uh, you know, amazing journey that we had two years ago, um, I, I had conversations with different, different filmmakers but I think one of the most meaningful conversations I had was with Ang Lee. Uh, and uh, he was a big supporter of the film. And, uh, um, you know, at the end of the conversation, uh, he, he was telling me, he was like, you know, Paul, when I look at you, I feel like I, 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 I see a younger version of myself. Um, uh, he was saying that, uh, you know, when he made his first films in Taiwan, he, you know, he felt that it was very authentic, very innocent. And he said that Lunana has that same tone to it. And he was saying, but now, you know, uh, over the o over this illustrious career that he's had, he was saying that with every film, he's he's been trying to shed away this innocence. And now he finds himself as this, you know, very accomplished, decorated filmmaker. Uh, and he looks back and he realizes that, uh, you know, somewhere along the line, he's lost this innocence. And he tries to get that back. But, you know, he's saying it's very difficult once you have lost it. So one advice he gave me was, you know, Paul, you, you, moving forward, I know you'll make all kinds of films, but, you know, please uh, keep that heart of innocence, keep that heart of Lunana, uh, you know, in every film. And I think that was, you know, that, that was a very, very, you know, precious advice. And I tried to do that with The Monk and the Gun. Um, well, you know, with The Monk and the Gun, I tried to build on what I was able to achieve with Lunana, you know, um, uh, I, th I thought, okay, you know, I want to try to make something that's a little bit more comedic than Lunana. Uh, I think comedy is always a challenge. You 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 get it, and if you don't get it, then it's it, it does it just doesn't work. I wanted to experiment with multiple characters. I wanted to experiment with multiple storylines and see how they could all come together. And uh, you know, uh, and as Ang Lee said, I, I tried to keep that innocence, you know, the heart of innocence. Uh, it's it's difficult, but you know, uh, I I tried. <laughs> oh my god! And I think you were absolutely successful there. And to hear Ang Lee say that, I mean, uh, what a <laughs> what an amazing compliment that was. Yes, have been. yes, oh, yes, amazing. Well, you spent um, many years as a as a successful photographer before mm -hmm. uh, before entering be, before becoming a filmmaker, um, yeah. and I, I was wondering how that experience influenced the visual style of the monk mm -hmm. and the gun. Uh, what, how did you approach the visual style of the film? Um, you know, with the uh, um, both being a photographer and a filmmaker, um, I got into it because uh, of my passion for storytelling. Uh, I was never trained as a filmmaker or a photographer. And as I told you earlier, I, I was I studied political science. Uh, and then after that, I studied Buddhism. Uh, but uh, definitely, you know, um, I think uh, spending many years as a photographer um, and then transitioning into uh, moving pictures, it 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 you know uh, you you get a lot of you you have a certain idea of how you want certain scenes and uh, you you know it's easier to discuss with the the director or photographer who's the same one as Lunana so we have a good working relationship and with every scene you know uh, as a photographer he knows how I want it how how I envision it so yeah uh, and also as you can see with uh, both films it's not like we are trying to do too many fancy things, you know, you, you know, uh, with Lunana, the camera is always still, you know, it's actually like a, it's, it's actually like a still photograph. Um, 
you know, it's a uh, th that was something conscious we, we did. Um, one was also the lack of equipment, <laughs> but then also, you know, as a photographer, that's how I wanted it. Uh, you know, the camera, the camera was always uh, still uh, either handheld or on tripod, and, and as 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 a uh, as a photographer, that's how I preferred it. And even with the monk and the gun, uh, a lot of times the camera is always still. Um, it, when it when it was moving, it was for a very specific purpose. So yeah, mm, that's good. I was also curious about the casting process. Uh, I presume mm -hmm. uh, for, for many of these actors, this was their first role. So what was it like finding yeah. these, these, <laughs> these talented actors? And the, the cast is phenomenal. It doesn't feel like they're, you. they're amateurs, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, with Bhutan, we have filmmaking in Bhutan. There's a lot of limitations, um, you know, um, as you probably are aware, the film industry in Bhutan is very small, you know, um, I mean, Lunana was just the second film ever to be submitted by Bhutan to the to the to the Academy, um, and the, you know even to rent a camera, uh, for example, for the Monk and the Gun, the camera has to be brought in all the way from India, and to bring it from India to our principal location, it took about a week's drive, uh, crossing borders, immigration, customs, very very complicated, but that also because of the, the the state of our film industry uh you know we we don't really have any professionally trained actors uh so um uh, also with lunana and the monk and the gun you know we have to rely on uh, first time actors uh or people who don't have uh you know like international experience um but you know what, what we do is we take our disadvantages and try to make the best out of it and try and you know, make it our advantage. Uh, so uh, the same with both movies, we try and cast very early. Uh, both films casted very early and we cast uh, people who kind of, uh, th their real life actually mirrors the characters in a way. For example, the the, the teacher in Lunana, he, you know, I found him uh, singing in a bar and I thought, wow, he has, you know, good presence, He's, he can sing. And then I went to talk to him and I was like, what are you doing, you know, the next few months? And he said, oh, I'm about to, I'm applying for my visa for Australia because my family is already there and I'm thinking of going there. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. So, you know, that, and even Pemzam, the little girl, everyone's favorite, you know, um, she was actually one of the, one of the five children in Lunana. And, uh, you know, uh, she sang this song for me and I was like, oh, this is perfect, you know, so. I, I got to know her. I realized she doesn't have a mother. She, she has an alcoholic father. So in a way, I tried to uh, put her story in the movie, make the girl, character in the film a singer as well. And, you know, basically then I'm telling them not really to act, but then to almost tell their own story. It becomes much easier then. And the, the same thing with the monk and the gun, you know, uh, for example, the Lama, you know, the the, the bearded man, um, he's the only Lama in Ura village. And I met him because I was trying to get the permission for the stupa. And then I walked into his room. It was just like that opening scene with the light coming in through the window. And he's sitting there with his back towards me. And I'm trying to get permission for the stupa. And then he then I then you know I hear his husky voice and his like smoky eyes. And I was like, wow, this guy is perfect for the role. And uh, I asked him what he was doing the next few months, and he said he was going to go meditate in his cave. And I was like, how about you stay back for a couple of months and help me with this? At first, he was a little reluctant, but then he came around. Uh, so, yeah, you know, working with uh, uh, actors like this, you know, there is risk and there is a lot of, uh, you know, um, challenges. But then I think if you can uh, work with them early, uh, you get this very perfect balance between performance and authenticity. And at this, uh, and that's when the I think the story becomes very, very real. And I know many people, both with the monk and Lunana, they say, "Oh, Pao's film is very docky feature." And I think that that's what I'm trying to do because I, I want to keep it as real as possible. Um, and even uh, you know, casting, uh, for example, Harry Einhorn as the American gun collector. Um, I think, uh, you know, we could have uh, gone another route and, for example, casted an established American actor. But then that's where the innocence is then lost, right? Uh, if, if this film is made with an established actor, then it goes, oh, this actor went to Bhutan and made a film. 
that's that's what the the, the news would be you know it, it, you you would probably be writing about this american actors experiences there it wouldn't be about change transition and the loss of innocence that's what the film is pushing forward so yeah uh we, we, as i said earlier take our disadvantages and make it into something advantages for the film <laughs> that's amazing uh, you know with with bhutan being relatively new uh, or, or small with the film industry uh, to many of us after the success of lunana right or wrong you sort of became the face of Bhutanese filmmaking. Um, and I just wonder after Lunana and with this new film, mm -hmm. what sort of responsibility that comes with? Uh, do you feel a sense of responsibility to sort of represent film in Bhutan or work with emerging filmmakers from Bhutan, things like that? Oh, oh definitely. You know, um, Bhutan, uh, we, we are such a small country. I, I come, I mean, the population of our country is like 700,000. I live in the capital city, which has about 80,000, you know. We, we can fit in one of the American football stadiums, the whole whole city. <laughs> uh, so we are very small. And um, I think um, Lunana's success, you, you know, um, it kind of uh, made me a, 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 almost like a role model, you know, because for 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 the Bhutanese, they, 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 we never see someone that achieve something like what Lunana had achieved. Uh, so I take that as a very very important responsibility. Um, for example, um, in Bhutanese culture, storytelling is something very important, right? So so important that we don't even have a word for it. We we call we we the act of storytelling. We say it's to untie knots. Because so so in English you would be like Daniel, tell me a story. In in my language, it'll be Daniel, untie a knot for me. The act of storytelling is supposed to have this purpose of freeing, untying, liberating. So I'm a storyteller, and I feel that is my responsibility. It is a it is an important responsibility. Um, but also, you know, um, for the Bhutanese, uh, like for example, when Lunana got Oscar nominated. I was uh, at the Academy Theater that they have, and they were giving out the certificates to the five nominees. And while I was there, I, I told uh, the Academy members that uh, for me, this is such an unprecedented journey because a year and a half ago, I was in this remote glacial village, 5,000 meters above the sea level, charging my one camera battery with solar batteries. I didn't even have dailies to watch. I, I took one shower in two months. And the journey the film had from the remote school to the Dolby Theater, it is such an unprecedented journey. And uh, yes, it does give, I think, uh, hope to Bhutanese filmmakers. But what I was telling them was it gives hope to all struggling filmmakers around the world. Because, you know, when you are a struggling filmmaker and you have these challenges to make films, it can be quite daunting and you question yourself, you know, am I doing the right thing? You know, is anyone going to even watch my film? And I went through that. Yes, definitely. You know, I, I question myself a lot. Uh, but then, you know, if you keep at it and keep your motivation true and, you, you know, if, if you keep your passion alive, then you ha you see this amazing journey that Lunana has been on. And yes, you know, uh, I have this responsibility to uh, work with the Bhutanese youth, but then also I feel like Lunana's journey, it, it you know, it, 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 it can give hope to all struggling filmmakers. I love it. That's so good. Well, mm -hmm. Paul, I, I appreciate your time before I let you go. Um, I, I'd love to hear uh, some of the some of the influences that have impacted your career earlier, you mentioned um, you mentioned the Cartoon Network and, and uh, <laughs> as a kid. And, uh, I'm not sure I see the tie of the Cartoon Network's influence to the Monk and the Gun, but I, I'd love um, to hear if there is one. <laughs> uh, well, I, I guess just how stories are told, right? Um, but then if you want uh, influences, definitely is I think the most important influence for me is Kensei Norbu. Uh, he's uh, the Bhutanese filmmaker, Lama. Uh, you know, he is uh, not only my filmmaking teacher, but, but also my spiritual guru. And in Bhutan, in Bhutanese culture, that's very important. Uh, really, you know, the reason why I am 
a filmmaker is because of him. Uh, he has guided me through, you know, the, through the whole process, and I'm very, very grateful to that. Um, uh, another director who's really influenced me a lot is uh, Koreda uh, from Japan. Uh, you know, I feel um, his films really, you know, um, like uh, like father, like son, our little sister. You can almost have that, you know that talkie feature that I was telling you about. It's very real. It's it's about human stories. And I get a lot of inspiration from him. And, you know, something interesting, Daniel, is um, uh, growing up, it was very difficult to get Koreda's films. Uh, <laughs> you, I mean, you know, uh, especially in Bhutan, you know, you don't, we don't have cinemas, right? <laughs> so, uh, and sometimes I would have to rely on, uh, you know, uh, horrors, you know, to watch his films. And uh, a couple of years ago, I was in Toronto Film Festival and strangely, I was seated with him, uh, uh, you know, at, at a dinner. And I was so excited and I was, you know, I was telling him, oh, Director Corretta, you, you, you're such a big inspiration for me, you know. Uh, I watched all your films. And then he looked at me and he was like, oh, how did you watch my films in Bhutan? <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, you know, Ang Lee as well, a uh, big, big inspiration. Um, um, uh, also, uh, uh, Jang Yimou's earlier films, um, you know, The Road Home, uh, Not One Less. Those films were big inspirations for me, for Lunana. So, yeah, uh, you could say those are the main inspirations. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> well, Pao, uh, I, I'm, thank, you, thank you so much for your time, and I cannot wait to see what you do next. Uh, I love your film, so thanks again. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you. Absolutely.